Sometimes films can ask the big questions about life, about people, maybe even about your beliefs. And that's where today's film comes in. This is the Kazdoy Closet. I'm Kazdoy. That's my closet full of all the stuff that I love. And today, a film that asks the question, what if he, Jesus Christ himself, the Prince of Peace, the Son of God, returned to earth a second time? What would happen? Let's check it out. Today's film is He Who Must Die from 1958, 128 minutes long, beautiful black and white, in French with English subtitles. Before I go any further, there might be some spoilers in this episode. Look at the title itself, He Who Must Die, is a bit of a spoiler right there. But this uh, begins with a small Greek village being ransacked by these Turks, and all the villagers have to leave and search for a new home. Meanwhile, there's another Greek village that's doing quite well, even though there's a Turk overlord watching them. And they're beginning to plan their passion play, that being the uh, story of Jesus, his trial, his crucifixion, and his uh, resurrection. And just like a lot of countries around the world, they choose people that live there in that town to play out the different roles in the passion play. So one of the villagers is playing the role of Jesus, another one is Mary, another one is Judas, and then some of the other people are apostles. So the questions are, how will those people assign these roles react to that? How will other people react to them now that they're playing these roles? And what happens if this village full of refugees comes to this more prosperous village? Will they be accepted? Will they be rejected? This film was directed by Jules Dassin. I always thought he was French. He was born in Connecticut, so it must be his name, and the fact that he made a few films in French. Uh, but he, had, he was, uh, has a history of being in the Communist Party during the Red Scare era. He was blacklisted because he refused to testify to the House Un-American Activities Committee. He made some wonderful film noirs, including Thieves Highway, Night in the City, the Naked City, Brute Force, and one of the greatest heist films and most influential heist films ever, Rafifi. Uh, this has an international cast, including Melina Mercury, and uh, she was in Never on Sunday, which Dassin directed, the two of them later married. And there's also a German actor named Gert Frobe, and you may recognize him as being Goldfinger in the James Bond film, Goldfinger. This film exactly wasn't what I expected. Um, there are a few spoilers here again, but I expected a small production. This is a large scale production with hundreds of extras filmed in CinemaScope. So you're going to have a widescreen experience and you're gonna have the picture cropped on the top and the bottom. Um, it doesn't play out like the passion play. I thought it would kind of copy that only in this setting, this Greek island of Crete. But um, it's not like The Last Temptation of Christ, which is more uh, closely adheres to that story of Jesus. Uh, in fact, the same author who wrote the novel Last Temptation of Christ wrote the novel that this was based on as well. So it follows the story, but really not uh, like the Passion Play does. Um, mainly the main thrust and a theme of this film is criticism of the church as a uh, hierarchy, as an organization, as having a too much power and kind of losing its way. Now, let me say right off the bat, I am not a religious person. Um, growing up, I thought Bible stories were kind of interesting, but I just treated them as mythology. And I'll be honest with you, I treat all religion as mythologies, just like Greek mythology. I read a lot of Joseph Campbell, like Power of Myth, some of his other uh, books. So that's how I see them. I'm a non-believer as, as far as Jesus being the son of God, the New Testament. I think he was probably a, a guy, a philosopher who had a lot of interesting ideas. And so I, not to offend anybody, but that's where I'm coming from. And, but I do find all religions interesting in their own way. And I find how people react to them and how closely some of them adhere to them pretty interesting too. But in this film, the church elders in this village are exposed as being a greedy, corrupt, uh, power-hungry, selfish, not charitable whatsoever, and pretty unethical. So it, it falls upon our 
guy who's playing Jesus, there he is here, the villager who uh, stutters. And at one point, once he's assigned the role of Jesus, he stops stuttering, by the way. But it, it falls to him to be the ethical voice, the true meaning of, of being a charitable and giving to, especially to the strangers in our midst, as he leads a revolt to uh, help these starving refugees. And there's a lot of them. It's not like a dozen or so. There's probably hundreds of them. And we're talking men, women, and children. And uh, so the film is really epic in scope. It uh, has minimal use of music, though. Like most epics have this big pounding music kind of overwhelming you. Not much music in here at all, which is I, I like, which is good. It kind of lets you... Uh, uh, figure out what's happening and get more into it, I think, instead of telling you how to think about it. I mean, it feels real. It feels like these people are really living there on this island. And the faces on the people are just amazing. There's a lot of people on this. The camera pans across a lot of people, like maybe hundreds of people, and they're doing various things. Um, they're cooking, they're, uh, they're, they're working, they're playing the kids are playing it's it's really amazing the faces on the people are just incredible and the good performances all around in this film as well it's really engrossing somewhat in unpredictable and i thought for a 128 minute film it was pretty fast moving i mean the last uh 15 minutes or so i thought they don't have much time left they need to wrap this thing up and, and something's going to have to happen to this jesus character so i was totally on board with this one um, why this film was so obscure i had never heard of it this is maybe the most obscure film i've ever talked about on this channel um, i don't know why it was so obscure maybe it was controversial because of the criticism of the church maybe because dasson was once blacklisted um, the new york times did do a review of it at the times and gave it a, at the time it was released and gave it a really rave review so that might have helped it but kind of a forgotten film of jules dasson but if you're a fan of his, I think you're going to like this. And if you are a fan of a religious theme or if you find religion interesting um, and you're open-minded, of course, I think you'll like this as well. I'm going to give this one four and a half goats, not crosses, four and a half goats out of five. Why goats? At one point, this Jesus character gives these starving refugees a goat so they can milk the goat and uh, feed their kids. So what's on this disc? This is a Kino disc. There's not much on here. It looks very good. It sounds very good. And uh, it has a commentary by a film historian, which I did not listen to. And uh, it has a handful of trailers. Uh, where can you see this? That's going to be difficult. You can look around. Maybe you know more places to look at than I do, but I, I don't even see it for rent anywhere. Um, if you are a collector or you want to buy this, I would wait for the Kino sale. I got this during a sale for 10 bucks, well worth it. So feel free to leave a comment or suggestion down below. I want to thank, as usual, our loyal viewers, Michael and Tina, for leaving comments since our last episode. And uh, leave a thumbs up. Don't leave a thumbs down. Uh, subscribe would be great. Share this with your friends and neighbors. We're very close to our next goal of 425 subscribers. And I want to thank our new subscriber, Keith, thank you for subscribing. And also a reminder, we are on Letterboxd. There's a link down below to look at Letterboxd. We have a new follower on Letterboxd. That is James. Thank you, James, for following us. That's where we post brief reviews of things we talk about on the channel and things that we don't talk about on the channel. So hope you like this episode and thank you for watching and we will see you next time.